Hi, I'm Brian with HVAC School, the HVAC School podcast, HVACRschool.com. That's a mouthful. I'm making this video in conjunction with TrueTechTools.com because they have really great tools like these Testo 605i Smart Pro Thermo Hygrometers that I'm demonstrating here. And this video is going to be about something that I noticed with the 605i, and it just kind of struck me as something that probably a lot of you are going to notice and think, this is really weird. And actually, initially, when I first started kind of wrestling with this, I sort of understood what was going on, but not really. And I reached out to Jim Bergman, and we had a conversation, and he gave me this description of how he explained it to his students. And I thought it was a really good description, so I thought I'd rob it and make a video of it. Of course, that's, you know, what's, what's a little robbery between friends, right? When you're using the Testo 605 Eyes with the Smart Probes app, like I happen to be right now, uh, verifying delivered capacity, what you're gonna notice is that this supplier relative humidity is really high. And you can see the return air relative humidity is actually pretty low. Strangely enough, it's actually kind of dry here in Florida, probably because the state's on fire right now. But you can see this is where my probe is here in my supply. And then I've got my other probe hanging down here below the return. And so the question is, why is my relative humidity so high in the supply? Doesn't that seem like a problem? In fact, in previous testing that I've done, I've actually seen it significantly higher than that, almost at 100% relative humidity. So what gives? So this right now is reading 55 degree dry bulb supply air with 88% relative humidity. And the question is, why is that? Because the typical thinking would be, well, we've got this air mass that's going over the evaporator coil. It's reaching dew point and it's dropping moisture. So the moisture is draining out the drain. Right now we're draining water outside. So if we're draining water outside, why is the relative humidity going up? It's coming in at 40% relative humidity and going out at 88% relative humidity. So why is that? So we're gonna do a demonstration that Jim Bergman suggested that he used to do in his class, but he hasn't done a video of it yet, and I'm going to. We're gonna say that this sponge represents air doesn't really look like air but and we'll say that the size of the sponge or how much it's compressed represents the temperature of it and then the water represents the relative humidity or the moisture of the air okay so the water is the moisture the sponge is the air how big it is is the temperature so right now this sponge is at 81 degrees we're gonna say that essentially this is a dry sponge it's not dry but it's mostly dry it doesn't have much moisture relative to the overall capacity that the sponge can hold okay so relative humidity 100% relative humidity for this size sponge would be it completely saturated. So this would be 100% relative humidity. Totally saturated sponge. This sponge is at 100% relative humidity based on its size. So I'm gonna squeeze out 60% of its water. Now we're gonna say that's 40% relative humidity. So it's 40% of the water that this air can hold and it's coming in full size, it's coming in at 80 degrees 79.7 .7 degrees dry bulb right now. Comes into the coil, hits the coil, and as that hits that coil, the air gets colder, and that temperature drop is represented by making the this, this sponge smaller, so by squeezing it. So, now the air, now the sponge, which is the air, can hold less moisture. It dropped a bunch of moisture. But now, it's at about 100% relative humidity. It had to be at 100% relative humidity in order to drop moisture. You, get, you feeling what I'm saying? It had to be at 100% relative humidity in order for it to drop moisture because if it wasn't, then it wouldn't have dropped moisture. So when it's touching that coil, it's at 100% relative humidity. Now the trick is that not 100% of that air actually made good contact with the coil. So it didn't go to 100% relative humidity, it only went to 88.8. .8. And so instead of squeezing it all the way, I'm gonna let off it a little bit right now. And so this represents 88.7% relative humidity because it's 88.7% saturated. It goes out into the airstream, and as it comes out, and as soon as it, in, into the duct, as soon as it goes out the duct into the rest of the space, hey, back over here. As soon as it goes out the duct and back into the rest of the space, then it's allowed to warm up again, and now it's lower than it was before. If you remember, I started with it at 40% relative humidity. I went in, I squeezed some out, and then it was, it remained at 88% relative humidity in the duct. And then when it got out the duct, then it expanded. And the question that my cameraman asked me when I first 
posed this was, well, why doesn't why isn't the inside of a duct mold crazy? Well, the reason is is because the inside of a duct, when you're in cooling mode, is going to, if anything, it's going to pick up heat, not lose heat. So if the temperature outside of the duct was colder than what was in the duct, then it could condensate inside the duct. But that doesn't happen because obviously we're in cooling mode. That's the point. So that's the reason why your supply air temperatures will be near 100% relative humidity. In fact, any differential between 100% and what you actually have displays how much what we call bypass factor or bypass air is making it into the supply air stream. So if we had no bypass factor, if all of the air was reaching 100% relative humidity, then it would still be 100% relative humidity when it hit the duct. The fact that it's not all 100% relative humidity either means that the coil is not at dew point, which we know that it is at dew point. So that means um, that we have that percentage of air bypassing. So it doesn't mean that it's like bypassing, like it's going around the coil. It just means that that percentage of air isn't making full contact with the coil, isn't reaching dew point or 100% relative humidity which those are the same thing. Dew point, 100% relative humidity are the exact same thing. In fact, when your dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature and dew point are all the same is 100% relative humidity. 100% relative humidity, a lot less than 100% relative humidity. See what I did there? See, it's still 100% relative humidity here when the air gets colder, because it's still totally saturated. As long as water is coming out, 100% relative humidity air. But as soon as it heats up and expands, boom, it can hold a lot more again. Now this is like 10% relative humidity. Just to be a little more detailed in the description for those of you who want that sort of thing, I wanted to plot this on a psychometric chart and actually show it in action. So if the air coming in is 81 degrees, so the return air is 81 degrees dry bulb at 40.5% relative humidity, which is what we were showing early on when we were looking at the Smart Probes app. So we plot up to the 40% line from 81 degrees and then go right to see the grains of moisture. And you can also, if you go further, you can see the dew point. But the grains of moisture here are 64. And the dew point is approximately 54.5 degrees. So this means that the air touching the coil must get to at least 54.5 degrees Fahrenheit for any condensation to occur. And that means dehumidification. So if you don't have condensation, then you don't have dehumidification and vice versa. This also means that the evaporator coil itself has to be colder than 54.5. If it's not colder than 54.5, then the air can't get to that temperature. So when we're talking about dew point, we're actually talking about the temperature of the air achieving dew point. Now when we go into the supply, we're measuring a 55 degree dry bulb supply air temperature in the duct above the unit. And we're reading it about uh, two, three feet above the unit. And it's now reading 88% relative humidity. And the point of this whole video is kind of to demonstrate that that 88% relative humidity isn't a problem. Because when you look at that, a lot of techs are going to think, oh my gosh, that's an issue. But if we plot that over to the right, we can see that the air now contains 56 grains of moisture per pound instead of 64 like it did before. So that proves that dehumidification is in fact occurring. And the reason that the supply is at 88% relative humidity and not 100% relative humidity is due to coil bypass factor, so not all of the air is actually coming in, in solid contact with the coil. Duct gains, meaning that there is some dry bulb temperature added even in that short piece of duct, and blower gains because the blower actually adds heat. So based on what we know, because we see a change in the grains per pound of dry air, we know that it's dehumidifying. We also know that we have some bypass factor. We have some gains because our relative humidity is 88% and not 100%, which is what you would expect. I said that really animatedly, like, so, what gives? Why do you think that is? <laughs> Let's say your dry bulb temperature is 80 degrees. If your wet bulb temperature was also 80, then that would mean that you're at 100% relative humidity. Or if you're at 100% humidity, humidity, that would mean that your wet bulb and dry bulb would be all the same. Isn't that interesting? What would it be if you were at 100% humility? <laughs> <laughs> Which is what you said several times. Is that what I said? Yes. Um, well, then you'd be like me. Uh, oh, I thought you then you'd just be like, everything I do is so bad. I'm the worst. 100% <laughs> relative humility. Which means that whenever you go to a family reunion, all you do is talk bad about yourself. But it's only 100% if everybody else talks really good about themselves. Because it is relative. Right. If you're in a bunch of other hum humble people. No, now you're doing relative twice. So it'd be uh, relative, relative humidity. Humility. Oh, right, yeah. I think we just lost the entire audience. In addition to enjoying squeezing sponges, 
I would also suggest that you subscribe to the YouTube channel here. It's up there. No, 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 you can't. No, don't. You're not supposed to move the camera because it, it stay. How, hey, how this works is it stays in one place on the screen. So you subscribe over there. To the, no, 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 you're not supposed to move the camera. That's not how this works.